Is it play play? Oh yeah, CGI. Okay. Sure. Sure, sure. Sure. But it makes me ask the question. Oh, little dragon. Where are you going? I see you like your trees. I see you like your mountains. I see you like your mountains. I see you love your trees. What are you doing in those mountains? You know, Chef Candy, man. You know, she uh just went to sleep, you know, and uh while she was going up the stairs, she turned around and said, you know, those stone eggs coming out that tree, I mean, that's probably why the dragons keep flying around the trees, laying eggs in their tree. Remember, they lay eggs on land, but where? They lay eggs at a certain altitude in their trees, in their trees. I mean, their eggs, you know, these stone eggs fall, they're hard, the shells are hard as stone, so they don't hurt the dragon baby dragon these people are collecting them in China now this is a mysterious flying dragon filmed from China and what else is going on in China remember this sighting is also in China whether it's the same one or not I don't know but remember this one we saw last time look at footage of a giant mysterious flying creature that was caught on tape by a man in China this particular footage was taken... Now this looks like a different dragon. In a different perspective. Why are all these dragons being filmed in China? Well, maybe they just know where to look in their trees. And maybe in the cities like Los Angeles and, you know, L.A., Chicago, these big cities, New York. You know what I'm saying? You know, there's not enough trees that you really see them. Although there are dragons being spotted in L.A. as well. You know what I mean? We can't look that up. You know, Google that. Dragon in L.A. You know, you, you see what I'm talking about. Hey, remember, scientists are baffled by a mysterious tree or mountain that lays eggs. Remember, mountains are trees. Tree stump, mountain tree stump. This mountain is the real tree. This is just fake little shrub giving you weak ass oxygen. But this is your real oxygen. And when this got cut down, you shrunk. When that elevator went up and it can no longer touch the firmament because the firmament was risen even higher. When you fell, the firmament raised up, disconnected your trees. Your creator is further away. The ancients say that the sky was closer back then, which means they had more oxygen, more pure water, pure water, pure sun. And you know, we always talk about pure water, but we don't mention pure fire. You think when you light that match, that's pure fire? What's that pure fire like? What's that pure air like? What's that pure earth like? We're talking fire water, air, and earth. So along with your pure water comes that pure fire and that pure air. Have you breathed pure air? When's the last time you had a breath of pure air? When's the last time you had a sip of pure water or felt the pure fire and witnessed the pure earth? A pure people. This is your fake tree. This is your real tree. Your mountain tree shrub, right? Oh, we're just saying mountains were trees. I mean, the Devil's Tower in Wyoming is a tree. And many, many more, right? So just like Avatar, they took out your trees to take out your grid. And you've been affected by it. Even this tree here. 
and Mount Rorema. Remember, we got this Mount Rorema mountain or tree. Now, look how flat this is on top. Let's get a better picture of Mount Rorema or tree Rorema. Let's get a beautiful picture because water flows out this tree. This tree is the source of the Amazon River and the Orinoco River that Columbus said flows out of Eden, the terrestrial paradise. Columbus says that Mount Rorema I tell you, Mount Rorema is the source of many rivers, the Guyana and the Amazon and the Orinoco. So three of these major rivers, Guyana, Amazon, and the Orinoco. Now the Orinoco is the one that Columbus says flows out of terrestrial paradise. He says this Orinoco River in South America flows out of the terrestrial paradise. So what is this area, Mount Rorema or Tree Rorema, and how many dragon eggs do you think are, you know, nested within this tree, man? Hatched, you know, ready to be hatched within this tree. Now, these people are collecting dragons and either don't know it or they do because they said they're worshiping dragons in China, right? So they're worshiping something that is your essence. They... These people like to worship every part of you, <clears throat> or should I say venerate every part of you, and then, you know, in public or in their illusion, treat you like shit. Treat you like, oh, the Negro is the bottom or whatever, but the Negro is the con. And they took all the con shit and they idolize it and worship it. And the people that it's attached to have forgotten who they are. I'm talking tree Rorema. This is part three, man. You know, I'm going to try to wrap it up in this part. Really going to try hard. Let's go. We got work to do. Look at this, man. Mountain or tree? Mountain or tree that reached the firmament? Yeah, you know. Remember, this is water flowing out of it. This is the source of how many rivers? This is this not just clouds. This is water spewing out. <clears throat> this tree. Now look, man, it's my third drop today. My voice is gone. All right, let's go. This tree is the source of many rivers. Guyana and the Amazon. And the Orinoco. And in this picture here, you can see these waterfalls. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, here you might have more cloud cover. Let's see if we can get another shot. Alright. Let's try this one. Next. Here we go. Here we go. Alright, so this is with the cloud cover gone. Alright, so that's cloud cover mostly, but you still see the water. Here you see the water. Look at all the flow. Look at all this water coming out. All this is flowing into those streams. Pure water. Look at the base of how green this is. This is just lush paradise. They said the Orinoco River flows out of paradise. Out of the terrestrial paradise. Now I'm asking you. If Columbus says the Orinoco River flows out of the terrestrial paradise, we're just talking dragons, which means to see clearly. Put an Eden, Columbus, Orinoco River. Paradise. Let's see what we get, man. I mean, I know we got a dock somewhere. I'm just trying to iron. Well, this might be the one we saw before. Listen up. Christopher Columbus was keenly interested in finding the lost Garden of Eden. Where? Where? Where's Columbus coming? To the three Indias. To the further India to America 
So in America, just like they know that the Fountain of Youth is here and they always related it to Florida. They also know the Garden of Eden is here, which they also know the people. The people are here, which is why they're bringing a Hebrew interpreter, Louis Torres, to speak to the people, which is the American, the Khan, the dragons. He's looking for the Grand Khan. He's looking for the Grand Dragon. Christopher Columbus was keenly interested in finding the lost Garden of Eden. Lost to who? One of his prized possessions was a copy of Cardinal Pierre de Ailey's Imago Mundi, a geographical treatise that suggested terrestrial paradise perhaps is the place which the authors call the Fortunate Islands, the Canary Islands. Con, the Canary Islands. Ah, you see it all now, right? The Canary Islands is the Con, the Canary Islands. Now, was it off the coast of Africa? Was it? Let's keep reading. Columbus's copious marginal notes demonstrate his abiding interest in mapping the location of the Lost Garden. When he stumbled onto the island of Hispaniola, we're talking Haiti, Columbus believed he was close to rediscovering Eden. No, he never discovered it. How could he rediscover it? And it was never lost to those that, you know, are connected with it to this day. Columbus believed he was close to discovering Eden, a belief reinforced by the strength of the Orinoco River. So Columbus believed he was close to discovering the Garden of Eden which was reinforced by the strength of the Orinoco River. The same Orinoco River, Mount Rorema or Tree Rorema. We're talking about the source of the Orinoco. Columbus said it flowed out of the terrestrial paradise. And if this is where it flows out of, then perhaps the terrestrial paradise has something to do with this tree. But let's go. We're just surfing the wave. Connecting it, separating the dots, right? Brick by brick, we rebuild our house. When Columbus stumbled onto Haiti, Columbus believed he was close to discovering Eden, a belief reinforced by the strength of the Orinoco River. Columbus says... And I quote, I have never read or heard of so great a quantity of fresh water, pure water, so coming into and near the salt. How does all this fresh water come so close and into the salt but remains with such a quantity of fresh, pure water? Does it got anything to do with paradise, people? He wrote to Spain's King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella and the very mild climate also supports this view and if it does not come from there from paradise it seems to be still a greater marvel for I do not believe that there is known in the world a river so great and so deep all that said about the Orinoco River the mild climate supports his view of this paradise. And if it does not come from there, from paradise, from paradise. He's relating the Orinoco River to paradise, looking for Eden. He thought he was close to Eden, reinforced by the strength of the Orinoco River. A river that there is, is no, is, that I do not believe there is not. There is known in the world a river so great. So he's calling this the greatest river in the world. He's saying that it's connected to the terrestrial paradise. He's just not telling you the source of it is this tree. Giving off the fresh pure water. Causing so great a quantity of fresh water. 
I have never read or heard of so great a quantity of fresh water so coming into it near the salt. Fresh water coming out the tree. If it does not come from there, from paradise, it seems to be still a greater marvel. Terrestrial paradise, perhaps, is the place which the authors call the Fortunate Islands. Okay, we're just talking the islands, man. We're talking islands, and clearly, since they thought it was, they thought it was off the coast of Africa. Then he stumbles over here and says, oops, terrestrial paradise is coming from here. Because I, even though I've been all over there, on that side of the world, coming over here, Hispaniola, Orinoco River, Mount Roraima, we're talking Brazil, we're talking South America, we're talking Venezuela. I do not believe that there is known in the world a river so great and so deep. Orinoco flow. We're just talking about the Orinoco flow. We're just talking about the Orinoco flow. Write this down. I won't. I might forget. I'm learning to write things down a little more, man. I'm normally bad at that. Anyway, man. Shit, we just flowing, man. Let go, man. We just talking pure water. We just talking mountains or trees. Does this look like a natural form, or does someone slice your tree down? And if this is the source of Mount of Orinoco River, if this is the source of the Guiana, the Amazon, and the Orinoco River. And the Orinoco River is connected to paradise, and this tree has something to do with paradise. And sure, it was connected. You can tell it went right up, all the way up. All the way up to the throne, baby. Mount Roraima is a pretty remarkable, remarkable place. It is a tabletop mountain. Really, is that natural? Oh yeah, you know, it's just the wind. <laughs> it is a tabletop mountain with a, with a sheer 400 meter high cliff. Alright, tabletop. It says there's only one easy way up on a natural staircase like ramp on the Venezuelan side. There's a natural staircase ramp to get up. Sound like paradise? Sound like one of these mountains or, you know, the, the, the high mountain we came down off, the high tree we came down from? The Piedmont Indians of Gran Sabana see Roraima as the stump of a mighty tree. The Piedmont Indians of the Gran Sabana see Roraima as the stump of a mighty tree that once held all the fruits and tuberous vegetables in the world. So it is Avatar, baby, all day. Dragons ain't the only thing, but you keep seeing them around these mountains, which are trees, which are mighty trees. Now you just see the stumps of the mighty tree. Just the stump. Just the stump. Just the stump of the mighty tree. And the Pima Indians of Gran Sabana see Roraima as the stump of a mighty tree that once held all the fruits and tuberous vegetables in the world. In the world. Felled by one of their ancestors, the tree crashed to the ground. Felled by one of their ancestors, the tree crashed to the ground. Unleashing a terrible flood. Roro, R O R O I, in the Pima language means blue green or ma, and ma means great. Ma means great. You're interesting, right? Ma means great, and then they got more means great. See how they hijacking your ma. So Roray Ma means the great blue green. <laughs> wow. And there and there, hey, we gotta surf their way. They felled by one of their ancestors, the tree crashed to the ground, unleashing a terrible flood. Mm hmm. Okay. 
Malwa Raymond has been climbed on a few occasions from the Guyana and Brazil side. So you got Guyana, you got Brazil, you got Venezuela. You know, Preston John is rocking all throughout that. Solomon is rock, rocking all throughout that. We're talking cities of gold. We're talking this giant tree. Now it's a, now it's a tree stump, but it's still giving off the pure, fresh water. And I ask you why this mysterious dragon is flying into the tree. Some cold ass CGI. This is CGI, yo. This is some cold ass work right here, bro. Some cold work. I mean, again, why are these? Why is the homies all, all in the trees? What are they doing in the mountains, man? What are they doing in, in the near trees? Near the border of Laos, the man initially thought the creature was a bird, but upon zooming in, he discovered that it bared amazing resemblance to either a pterodactyl or a dragon. Is this mysterious creature a dragon caught on tape? What do you think? Here is the full unedited footage. were trees what is he doing in the trees what is he doing in the mountains we say scientists are baffled a rural and small chinese village has been in the media spotlight because of a mysterious cliff face that is said to lay eggs the so-called 